Today we've got uh, Marcus Sparris again with us, the, the founder of the Oxford Masters Business and the OKR man. So today Marcus is going to, to, to just tell us a bit about his fitness journey because as, as we know in, in Momentum Life Choices, business is, is just part of life and a lot of what underpins the, the, the mental or the career parts of our life is our fitness. And I think, Marcus, you have an interesting story to tell us about your fitness journey. So welcome. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you for inviting me. So, so can, carry on. Ahead. Can, you, can you just take us back to, to how or why your fitness journey started for you? Yeah, uh, I was going through a very successful time in my life when I was like traveling all over the world and uh, delivering uh, speeches and courses to large corporations like AT&T, Sky Television and uh, EasyNet and Microsoft and a number of other companies. Uh, being, very, being very well paid, very happy with everything. And uh, then uh, I had the first bad news. I went to the doctor and they said, uh, well, he said, you have a problem. Uh, your blood exam came back and it's horrible. And you have a history of heart conditions in your family. Your, your, your lifestyle is very bad. So you have to change the way that you eat and you have to change the way that you live. You have to start doing exercises. And, and, and it, I thought that would, yeah. be, that would be easy. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess it wasn't from that. No, I, I, I left uh, the surgery. I remember clearly, I, I, I usually live in Radcliffe, uh, Manchester, and the surgery was in the near town, nearby uh, area, Little Liver. And they left there thinking, ah, piece of cake. I will eat different, do a, a diet, and uh, I will subscribe to the gym. Yeah. So that's what I thought. And then I became a, I, I began a, a long battle against myself, like realizing that uh, what I decide to do is not always what I actually do in the end. And that yeah. was hard. <laughs> so what was that battle like? You say you're battling yourself. Yeah. Uh, for example, I said, well, I will start eating sweets and industrialized food. The problem is I love sweets and I love eating something sweet after a good meal. And I love snacking sweets as well. And I still love it, I changed. Uh, but if I start eating, I will enjoy it again. So that was the first battle, to eat better. The second battle is to exercise because I have been uh, a very chronic uh, sedentary. I am a sofa guy who likes to sit and stay there very quiet. I used to be like that. So these were my, my two major challenges, to exercise and to eat better. Yeah. So how long ago did this start for you? When, when are we talking 2008. about? 2008. That's how long it was. Okay. So uh -huh. this, this change, I guess, has progressed on from, from that point to now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and I believe that the, a turning point... Uh, was when my wife, Nanetta, my wife, uh, she decided to um, get into this battle with me, like uh, together with me. And uh, she came one day and she said, from now on, we will just buy what we are supposed to eat. You need to eat healthier and I will eat healthier with you. And the first step is we are not going to buy anything that we are not supposed to eat. No soft drinks, no snacks, nothing that is, uh, or a minimum possible of industrialized stuff. And then me, no way are you try, trying to control my life? Are you trying to decide what I eat, what I don't eat, what I do? No, not at all. I'm not going to do it. That's what I thought, saying. What I actually said was, Yes, honey, you are completely right. As long as you're right. Let's do it. <laughs> that, that sounds like some wise words from a man who's, who's, who knows better than to disagree with his wife. That's right. 
But, so but that's really important because what, what you're saying is, is, I think is true for, I know for, for a lot of people who are listening, um, that we need other people on the journey. It's, it's not an individual journey. That's like, exactly, yes. So you need the support in, in yeah, some exactly. form or the other. Yeah, and I, I believe that especially with couples, yeah. uh, there's a research that says that like, if you live with someone who is overweight, you increase the chances of uh, being overweight in more than 50, 50%. If you live with someone who smokes, you increase the chances of smoking by more than 30%. It's, uh, I don't, the numbers are more or less like that, but I, I was shocked with the numbers. So uh, if you want to change something in your lifestyle, if you manage to get uh, the, your other half to do it yeah. together with you, uh, you are much better off. You have much better sh- chances of uh, succeeding. Yeah. And so just walk us forward from that point. So what benefits do you think you've got from, from starting that and, and carrying on? Especially, I guess, in, in these, the last couple of years. Yeah, well, definitely better health, more energy. Uh, my brain works much better now, definitely. Uh, my, my best time of the day is when I'm doing the, my workout and I have lots of ideas uh, because I believe that our brains were designed, were wired up to function better when we are moving. So usually I, I have uh, the best ideas when I'm doing workouts or between uh, uh, sequences in workouts when I, I always walk between sequences. And that's when great ideas come. Uh, what else? I feel much more alive uh, than before. I was doing very well uh, professionally, but my body was deteriorating. It was going downhill. Mm-hmm. So I am now, well, that was in 2008. I am 62 years old now. And I feel so much better than 10, 15 years ago. Wow. So you're, you're a prime example of, of what people say now in terms of there's a big difference between the, the biological age um, and the chronological age. So the, the, the date on your birth certificate is not the same date that your body is telling you that you are. Yeah, that's right. I, I do from time to time, I do that, uh, I, I think it's called bioimpedance test, uh, when they put wires on you and everything else and so on. And my biological age is uh, always about 20 years less than my physical age. Sorry, oh. my, my, yeah, my, yeah. My, yeah. Yeah, my actual age. So and I, when I look at that, I feel really glad. And I say, well, that, that's, that's really rewarding. Very satisfying. So I guess that's another key point when we talk about fitness or any change is, is that you need some sort of psychological boost and you, and you get this from, from looking at your bio impedance um, recordings. Yeah. That's right, yeah. It's one of them. But I believe that we need uh, this uh, reward, this celebration uh, every time you do something right. Uh, I believe it's very important. I studied habits for a long time. I even wrote a book that became a bestseller yeah. uh, called uh, Small Habits, uh, Great Results. And uh, it's not available in English yet. I have to translate it. But uh, I, 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 what I came to understand is that habits, uh, they need celebration. They need rewards. And uh, if you don't celebrate, if you don't have uh, this kind of reward, if you, even if it's just like a tap on your back and saying, well done, Marcos, I did well. Uh, yeah. We need it. Our brains are, are wired, wired to uh, uh, respond to uh, celebrations, to rewards. So very important. So can you give me a, a practical example of, of how you would, or how you have rewarded yourself for, for accomplishing a goal or, or task? Yeah, well, uh, sometimes what I do, I think like, uh, well, w- when I just finish what I have to do, I always have that thinking of, uh, well done, Marcus, as I said, well done, mm-hmm. like uh, you did well. So I, I have to 
praise myself. Uh, and that's part of uh, my, my ritual of doing something right. Uh, sometimes we allow ourselves, Neneta, my wife and I, we allow ourselves uh, to eat like a bit more relax in a more relaxed way. Yeah. And uh, we are okay with that. Or even to drink in a more relaxed way as well. And we are okay with that because we, we have, uh, we think, well, we did well this week. So let's have a bit of uh, relaxing time and eat a pizza, for example, something that we don't usually eat. Uh, and we see it as a reward as well. Okay. And uh, we, between Deneta, my wife and I, we keep like uh, uh, reminding each other as well and uh, celebrating with each other as well. Like uh, I always compliment her in her achievements and, uh, and vice versa as well. So I believe that as you said before, if you have someone or if you have friends to do it together with you, for example, going to the gym, I always found going to the gym as a uh, terrible sacrifice. I don't go to the gym anymore. I do all my old workouts here at home, especially now after lock, lockdown and so on. Uh, but if you have friends who can like uh, go to the gym with you or do your workout with you, or be encouragement, and uh, it, you increase a lot the chances of uh, really doing it. Yes, that's true. So can you, um, for the sake of people listening, just give us a flavor of what your, either your daily or your, your, your weekly um, fitness routine looks like? Yeah, well, it is changing right now because uh, when the lockdown started, we, I began to do just like uh, workouts, just muscle developing at home. Mm -hmm. And I used to run before, and I began missing that feeling of uh, endorphins coming to your blood after about 20 minutes running. You start feeling like a uh, great on the top of the world uh, because of the hormones, of course. Yeah. And I, I, I began to miss it. So recently I began to run again and uh, oh, I forgot how good it feels and uh, how better I sleep after running. Uh, and so my, my routine is I try not, I'm not, I don't always succeed, but I try to do uh, my workouts three times a week. Sometimes I manage to do it only twice a week and I'm now running uh, twice a week as well. So not a lot, not really heavy, but it helps me enormously. So when you say run, are you, are you are you running 5k, 10k? Are you running? Are you timing it in terms of I'm going out to run for half an hour? So you, are you distance or, or are you timed? Well, or, time. or, or neither timed. Time. Yeah, because because I'm uh, going back to running, I'm starting like uh, slowly. I started with 20 minutes uh, yesterday. I did 45 minutes and uh, with intervals as well. So I, I run, for example, 10 minutes and then walk for two minutes and then run other 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm going slowly, I'm not a teenager anymore. So I have mm -hmm. to be careful yeah. and combine a, a good workout with uh, running as well. Uh, I, I have friends uh, who are of my age and uh, a couple of them had problems recently because they like so much running that they forgot to develop yeah. like stronger joint muscles and so on. So I don't want to have this problem. Yeah. So the days that you don't run, are you are you doing some strength training? Are you doing some core exercises or anything yeah, like I, that? I exercise. I'm very traditional in the way that I I, I do my exercise. Like I have uh, dumbbells. Yeah. Uh, that was a gift from my son and his family. He gave me a nice set of dumbbells. And so I, I uh, do muscle building, like legs, uh, like uh, scratching, and then, not scratching, uh, uh, I forgot the name now. Squatting. Squatting. Right. squatting. You do yeah. squats. Yeah, I do, I do squats with the dumbbells in, in my hands. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I do like uh, arms. I do push-ups. Yeah. Uh, what else? Press ups. And uh, so I have a number of exercises, but they're all like very, very traditional, nothing different. Um, and how often would you be doing this sort of strength training? Yeah, uh, between two to three times a week. I try to do it three times, but usually 
most of the weeks I managed to do only twice. So your your entire routine, your weekly routine is, is something like four to five times per week. That's right, yeah. Okay. Um, and so I guess like like a lot of people they'd be saying, well, so how do you manage to to keep momentum going when you have a busy schedule? There's other things going on in your life. Yeah. Well, my day are my days are usually very busy, like on Mondays and Tuesdays. I have calls with clients because of uh, I am I have clients in different countries and uh, because of different time zones. Uh, on Monday I finish half past eleven, and on Tuesday I finish around uh, ten o'clock. So and I start usually before seven o'clock. So I allow myself to have good breaks in the middle of the day, and it's usually when I have my workouts as well. Uh, and, and I use something called time blocking. So everything that I do, absolutely everything that I do is there in my, uh, my uh, calendar, Google calendar. So I block the whole day, even for lunchtime, even for breaks and everything else. Everything is time blocked. Uh, and I do it. In, the first thing that I do every day is my, my morning ritual and I do my planning of the day and I do time blocking. So my whole day, it's all decided beforehand. Uh, there's a guy called Jim Rohn. He used to say that uh, if you don't decide beforehand how you're going to use your time, all the people will decide for you. Yes. And according to their interest, not yours. <laughs> and I, I never forgot it. And I said, I want to decide how I want to spend my time every day of my life. Of course, it doesn't work uh, as always as planned, but yeah. at least you have a guidance, you have a, a reference of what you want to do and when you want to do it. So I guess, I guess when it doesn't work, you don't, you don't beat yourself up too much, but because you have this overall plan that, that yeah. you can see where it, it's meant to fit in. That's right. I am a good boss myself. I don't like uh, blame myself and beat myself up. No, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm learning to be merciful with people, but mm -hmm. if I'm not merciful with myself, I cannot be merciful with people as well. <laughs> Too true, yes. Yes, I think that that's quite biblical as well, isn't it? It to, is. <laughs> say, um, love God and love others as you love yourself. That's right, yeah. So just, just walk me through that then. Because you, you're working, and this, I think, is, is be interesting to people who, who do the same. You're working um, across different time zones. So sometimes you, you, you're doing stuff early in the morning, finishing, like, say, at, at near midday, and sometimes it's not. So does that mean that, that from in terms of your exercise um, timetable, Sometimes you exercise in the morning or the evening or, or at night. How does that work for you? No, I usually exercise near lunchtime. Okay. Before lunchtime. Because then it, it doesn't... And I, I, and I try to keep that time free. Right. So that, that, that's fairly fixed. So however you, you block your, the rest of your day, you, uh -huh. you know that you have a block around midday-ish. Yeah. Where, where you're, you're doing what you do. That's right, yeah. Um, so let's say um, if, if or when we get out of, of all of the restrictions and you start to move around, is there anything particular you do? Let's say you're going to visit family for a week or you're going on a holiday. How, how does that fit into to your fitness um, practice? Uh, John, this is always a challenge, isn't it? We go yeah. on holiday, it's hard. So when I go on a holiday, usually I, I stop my uh, workouts and I try to run and, and, and to have more uh, walks. I love walking. My wife loves walking as well. So what, I, what we can't is to allow ourselves to go back to stagnation, to be stopped and to be doing nothing again. So I believe that variety is, is nice. And I don't uh, see myself like I have to do it every week and it has to be the same every week. No, uh, I think that the most important thing is, is that we keep active. And by active, meaning uh, we do something that's not uh, too easy. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, 
I live in Shrewsbury and uh, here we have lots of hills. So when we do our walk together and that's in our break time as well, uh, my wife and I, we like going up hills and uh, that's an exercise in itself. Uh, it, yes. it's, it, and it's a good exercise. So, and on holidays, we try not to be so strict. We try to relax a bit as well. We, we allow ourselves to relax as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's, that's the definition of holiday, isn't it? Some sort yeah. of relaxation has to happen somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so, Marcus, do you um, use any tech or wearables to, to monitor your performance? Uh, John, so I, I used to, when I was starting running, uh, I, I wanted to make sure that my heart was in the right rate and so on. And for some time I did. By then, I, I learned about my body. And uh, I know that, for example, uh, after 20 minutes running, uh, my, my heart stabilizes or even before. And so I, I learned how it works. So uh, to be honest with you, I don't have any wearables anymore. Okay. Even like uh, I used to uh, do the, the tracking of my, how much I walked or run using an app. I don't do it anymore. I, I just... Just to have to, to enjoy, I, I just want to enjoy it and have fun as I'm doing it. It and, helps me to keep going as well. Yeah. So, can you see the difference between when you did wear um, a tracker to when you are now? What is that difference like for you? Well, in the beginning, because I'm, uh, I like new things, like I like novelties, and uh, I am uh, one of those guys that they call early adopters. When there is a new technology coming. I want to adopt it immediately. Yep. So in the beginning, to have something wearable, like I have a, I had a heart monitor here strapped on my chest, connected to the watch. And so for me, that thing was, wow, high tech. And uh, the motivation of wearing something like that uh, helped, me, helped me to uh, keep going as well, to keep running. Yep. Uh, but then it's, it was not a novelty anymore. And uh, as I said, I understood how my body worked in that kind of situation. So it, it, it did help in the beginning, but okay. I, I, I don't see it as, a, as something fundamental for, for me. Yeah. Uh, so if we move on to nutrition now, do you, do you take any supplements? Do you, how does nutrition fit into your um, the way you do your fitness regime works. Yeah, uh, I I usually take uh, creatine mm -hmm. and uh, before the workout and uh, supplements. I use uh, omega three uh, and also uh, vitamin D. Yep. So these are my I and calcium calcium as well calcium. Yep. So. Uh, just, just talk us through what, what benefits do you think you get from some of these supplements? Well, my daughter uh, is a nutritionist, Mariana Barro, Mariana Shepherd, Mariana Barro Shepherd. And uh, she, she advises me about uh, what I need. And sometimes I do blood tests as well uh, from time to time. So it's based on what uh, my body is lacking that I, I, she usually recommends me um, the supplements so that that sounds like um a great thing to have in your family a nutritionist who who can oh, give yeah. you the advice exactly exactly and uh it's great to be able to call her and uh, chat and get her insights definitely good yeah so marcus thank you that that's it's it's been really interesting hearing about um your your fitness regime um and for those of you who are watching or listening to us, you know, we'd love to hear about your fitness journey. So do drop us a line. If, if you are someone who, who uses um, wearables or trackers, um, see if you can connect, let's connect on, on our Strava community. Well, I think you can be encouraged and you can encourage other people on, on their journey as well. So, Alcus, it, it's been great chatting to you. Um, and we look forward to, to seeing you again soon. Take Thank care. you very much, Jonathan.